All right, Sean, what do you see on your screen? Everything. We're live. You're live. Good. All right. Looks like we are live. Well, we're not waiting for people to get on because this is a live streaming event. But we, of course, we will take this for all of our people. This is the new season of the Voice of Bodybuilding, and who better to start it off with than my old friend? And by old, I mean he's old. Sean yeah. Ray, what's up, sugar? Good man. I mean, uh, I love your shirt. Yeah, how about that? So the, the secret is out, my friend. Thanks for self, uh, sending me your shirt, bro. Um, we're going to take this uh, opportunity to formally announce that Mutant has become our title sponsor here at the Voice of Bodybuilding. Thank you, Sean, for all your help in uh, getting that done. And special yeah. props out there to uh, Jim McMahon and, and George and all the crew over at Mutant. Uh, couldn't be happier. As you can see, I got some background stuff already. We're going to be changing that up. But I got two big boxes of stuff. Yes. And I mean, they sent me everything, Sean. We're gonna get you back on stage, bro. Yeah, let's not get crazy now. But uh, I'll get on. I'll be. I will be on stage actually in just a few weeks in the uh, at the Arnold in Ohio, bro. Yeah. So there's a question. People are saying, "Is it 35 years or 36 years?" Correct me if I'm wrong. I know I'm getting old, and I was there for every single one. Through that, I could have sworn one year ago that they paraded all the past champions. That's on right. the stage with Arnold celebrating 35 years last year. Am I right or wrong? Well, now this shouldn't be tough to figure out. We, we've always speculated because of there is no year zero and all that stuff that whether it's an annual or whether it's an actual year. For instance, we were both born in 1965, which we weren't one until 1966, right? So you kind of you kind of lose a year, so to say. Um so your, your guess is good. It should just be, you don't lose a year in an event, right? It's just the year. So yeah. first year was what, 89, I think? Yeah, yeah. That's 35 years ago. I mean, it's, but it's we're celebrating the 36th annual. And okay. I'm one of the fortunate few, Bob, that can go around and brag that I've never missed one. And like no. I would, uh, I was never sick during those times. I, I think Arnold missed a couple because he was shooting movies. Um, I think Jim Lorimer missed a couple because he was not in the best of health, but right. I'm one of those guys that never missed it. So I've witnessed all of our past champions. In well, as a former winner, of course, my friend, you should be there representing. And uh, speaking of representing, like I say, a mutant, of course, our title sponsor uh, for this season and hopefully from here out. Uh, also got to get a big, big special shout out to our good friends at Celsius. Everything's backwards on here. Yeah. Uh, they are in, representing huge with a, a couple of uh, containers of Celsius that they've sent me. And they've got the brand new powder form um, for travel. Fantastic, bro, because now I can have Celsius wherever I go. Uh, here and abroad, and we got some of those shows coming up. And, of course, this episode is powered by Panada, my good friends at Panada Sports Equipment and uh, ProFit Sports Solutions. And so I got all kinds of people coming and going, Sean. Business of bodybuilding is good. They don't call you the voice of bodybuilding for nothing. And I, I got to give you mad props because you're everywhere and you're doing everything. Much like myself, I think we pride ourselves going all the way back to 1985, 84 uh, as teenage bodybuilder. I think you mentioned you started when you were 15 years old. 13. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so. 17. So you've got more years in the game, but uh, it's important for, for relevance and for context to have that historical background of the people that came before us and the people that are coming up. Uh, it's good to see that you never stepped away and uh, you kind of know all the ins and outs and the nuances because it does take a strong support group, uh, which clearly Mutant is, is is one of the leaders of the pack. This is their third year being the title sponsor for the Arnold Classic. Even in the COVID year, when some sponsors dropped out, Mutant stepped up. And uh, they've been doing some very phenomenal things, including uh, bringing on board Sean the Giant Killer, Clarita, uh, two-time 212 champion, and of course, four-time Ms. Olympia, Andrea Shaw, and uh, just doing some big things and supporting the Olympia. Jim McMahon and the whole staff and crew, uh, we're going to be headed over to uh, the Arnold Classic in the UK only two weeks after this year's Arnold Classic, yeah. you know, and uh, back there in Las Vegas for the, the Joe Weider with Mr. Olympia, which is another controversial celebration of 60 years, <laughs> right? but I are only 58. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, we still haven't figured that one out, but the, you know we'll get the mathematicians on that one. But I'm sure the uh, internet sleuths will be all over that one to correct us. But um, speaking of Jim McMahon, I, I got to give a huge shout out to Jimmy because um, we've had a good relationship for some years now, and he, he's he uh, definitely drums to his own beat. He, you know, I like Jim because he's got his own style. He doesn't care what anybody else thinks. 
But what I like most about him, Sean, is is, is uh, in the last couple of years, we've gotten to know each other. Uh, he is very old school when it comes to the sport of bodybuilding, um, you know, when it comes to the, the competitions, everything. Um, he's, he's old school, and I like old school. We're old school, but it, old school, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, seems to be making a comeback of sorts. 100%. But, I, I mean, Jim's philosophy is like leave, leave humanity behind. It's like <laughs> don't let the noise interfere what it is you're doing. Uh, and we're all pretty much equal in this race called life. In terms of getting from point A to point B, no, nobody is superior than the next. Yeah, I'm a Hall of Fame bodybuilder, but he doesn't see me as a Hall of Fame bodybuilder. He sees me as a kindred spirit, someone you right. know actually just put his nose to the grindstone and does the business of bodybuilding. Uh, the good thing about uh, mutant and Jim is give people opportunities, right? I mean, some of these bodybuilding shows they wouldn't get the support of Jim unless right. he. He was a, unless he was able to support the athletes. It's about the athletes. You take the athletes out of the equation, we don't have a business. We don't have a sport. Very true. So supporting things like the voice of bodybuilding, supporting some of these athletes trying to be the very best in the world, and also supporting those athletes that are just trying to make it through life, that really is the culture over at Mutant. I've been trying to be more inclusive of, of letting people know this is it's not my message. It's Jim's message. Sure. Great, which is why you're such a great addition to this because you personify, you know, being everywhere and everything as an icon in the sport of bodybuilding. Well, appreciate that, Sean. And uh, yes, uh, for those who want to know, uh, me and you will be making their grand appearances at the Arnold Ohio, uh, the Arnold UK, in just a few weeks after that, FIBO, uh, Rimini, Italy, uh, Dubai <laughs> later on in the year, uh, then Dubai again at the end of the year. So, um, uh, we are truly worldwide and then we live, breathe and eat bodybuilding. That's what we do. Um, even though I did have a couple of regular jobs when I was younger, uh, you, and my friend have the distinction of never having a job outside the sport of bodybuilding. Yeah. I, we, I'll go back to the old phrase that we said at the art of classic in, in, uh, art of classic 35. Mm -hmm. You know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in life. And I think, uh, Jim can probably say that for himself. We know, we know there's some work involved. But when you're passionate about what you're doing and you're able to evolve with the times, like I was very passionate about competing for the Olympia. You know, I, my, only, my only dream at one time was just to be a teenage national champion. My only dream at one time was to join Bob Paris and Roy Liedemeyer as becoming yeah. Mr. California. My dream evolved and I wanted to be a national champion. So setting those goals and then in reaching those things, you start checking them off. It's not work. Yeah, I knew that one day the light would come down on my physique and I would be considered a middle-aged man at some point in time. But doing what I love is not, it is a labor of love. I love what I do, so I don't consider it work. I wanted to become a promoter because I was challenging one of the promoters about giving better pay to the bodybuilders. I'm not sure if I told you the story, but in 1990, I won the Ironman Championships and I won $10,000. Well, in 2005, I looked up and they were still giving away $10,000. So I complained to the promoter about it and he challenged me to do what he was doing, put on my own show, put my money where my mouth was. And that's where I created the Sean Ray Colorado Pro Classic, which gave birth to Phil Heath, which gave birth to Phil um, to uh, Kai Green. Kai Green, yeah. Also gave Pro Bodybuilding Weekly, yourself and Dan Solomon, a platform on the stage to broadcast. That's right. yeah. So that's not, those are challenges. I mean, I, I, I took up bodybuilding for the challenge. And so I never really did consider it work. And uh, I've been very fortunate to work with some great people, including Joe Weider, Steve Bleckman, Robert Kennedy, uh, Jim McMahon. I've had some very good opportunities rubbing elbows with Max Muscle, with Saranac Gloves, of course, the yeah. Olympic platform, and now more recently, Jake Wood, that some people have, they got tired of holding on. They let go. I just, I grabbed the rope and I hung on. And so I'm riding right through this, the bodybuilding industry as a commentator, as a sponsor, and as a promoter, because I love what I do. So I don't consider it work. Well, speaking of uh, money where your mouth is, I got to give uh, respect and props. Um, the IFBB Pro League, i.e. Tyler Mannion, Jim Mannion, of course, celebrating his 80th birthday this week in Pittsburgh, Sean. I will be there uh, rep representing, but hard to believe Jimmy's 80, but uh the same joe biden right i mean this guy knows he hasn't forgotten nothing i mean the we right? met him when he was 40-ish 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's in great shape still. Trains every day. Li living the, the life of a bodybuilder. That's uh, at the core. That's what Jim is. He's a bodybuilder. A happy, so, birthday, happy birthday. But, My mom's birthday is uh, on the 16th. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy birthday. Yeah. Um, and happy birthday, Jim. Happy birthday, Mama Ray. Uh, but uh, my point was, the IFBB has finally gotten involved when it comes to prize money. Tyler Manning putting out a report uh, just a couple of weeks ago that the prize money is going to be increased across the board. So they've actually gotten a sponsor and taken those dollars and actually put it towards the prize money. I think this is not only important for the sport, but I'm glad they've kind of taken that interest, even though it, traditionally it's never been set up that way. Uh, where the promoters have been responsible for the prize money. We've seen some big, big prize money, and we've some pri seen, seen some prize money that hasn't moved in years. But this is a great step in the, in the right direction um, because without that kind of prize money, uh, without that type of incentive, um, it, these lineups are not stellar these days. Uh, we, we wonder out loud, like, why is there a return to the old school? Why is there this love for 90s and early 2000s bodybuilding and not today? And that's kind of frightening when you think about it, bro, because bottom line is, is, I mean, these guys should be getting all these accolades today, but for some odd reason, they're not. Why? Well, listen, at the end of the day, more prize money to the athlete is, um, that's all I've ever fought for. I've championed that argument from the Olympia platform. When I'm on the Olympia press conference, I was arguing for more prize money on my exit in 2001. If you go back and, and uh, watch that that interview on, on YouTube. We were there. Yeah, and so to see this hap happening in my lifetime it makes me happy. I mean, I mean, back then, I don't even know that, uh, you know, Tyler might have been barely a, a toddler at the time. So to see him leading the charge on this, uh, we're trending in the right direction. Now it's up to the athletes to respond to it, right? Because we follow this sport uh, because we like to see what's impossible. Some people like to see what's, you know, what we can do with our body. Not everybody can do. And so when we see these athletes dedicate their lives to it, we want to see them walk away feeling compensated because it takes a whole year out of your life to transform for the Olympia stage for our entertainment. I think it's a great thing that there's more money being put in. I'm just hoping that the athletes respond and get on the stage and, and perform for us. Well, social media has certainly changed the dynamic. We know that. We'll get into that in a, in a future show. But um, speaking of Tyler Mannion, uh, it's amazing I even have to bring this up, but I've got to, I have to address this because it's fresh and it's new. Tyler Mannion actually had to put out a statement just a few days ago detailing that everybody has seen now that that Brazilian, I don't even know what to call it, the men's wellness competitor that we saw that you couldn't tell whether it was a feminine guy or a masculine woman or some kind of weird hybrid type thing going on there, okay? But automatically it was assumed. And this is the part that blows my mind, bro. Maybe you can lend some clarity here for me. That everybody just assumed this was an IFBB and NPC thing. And, and it's got nothing to do with us. I don't even know if it's a federation thing. It's just some weird thing out of Brazil that they had this one person that stepped on stage with this bizarre notion of this hybrid men's wellness thing. But the internet went crazy. And I got to be honest, I was a little surprised at some of the people that responded. And I'm talking about people that you and I know very well. I don't want to throw any specific names but these are people that have been in the game for many years. Some of them might be considered superstars. Um, questioning, you know, why would the NPC do this? Why would the IFBB? Pro we got nothing to do with it. Tyler actually had to put out a statement saying as much. How can it be, Sean, in this day and age, that people that are that susceptible or that stupid to think that this is something that we would have anything to do with? Well, I, I think you have to remember, I think everything that happens in the industry of bodybuilding is measured by what the IFBB Pro League and the NPC do. Yeah, right. So they see something out there. Most people don't read the headlines. Most people do. It's a, lot of, a lot of things are clickbait. A lot of things are very short attention span. And, of course, anything bodybuilding related, they start with the IFBB Pro League, NPC, and they work their way down to the Alphabet Soup Federations that, that are out there trying to do what we do. Um, so I think some people, with a rush to judgment, um, are resistant to change. Listen, we're living in a world of inclusivity. Everything's acceptable these days. And to me, <laughs> you know, the, the IFB Pro League has led the charge in bringing along these new divisions, uh, including wellness, including the wheelchair division, including the 212, which once was the 202. Uh, you know, and so 
we've watched it evolve. When I was a bodybuilder back in the 80s, it was only men's bodybuilding and women's bodybuilding. Sure. So two divisions in the 80s that have now evolved into 11. So with this idea that there might be something new in the bodybuilding world, the assumption stands to reason that maybe it's coming from the IFBB Pro League. I recommend for people to investigate first, read thoroughly, right. before you jump to conclusions. And in the internet world, it's easier to jump to conclusions than act and do some research than it is to assume it's something from the IFBB. I think the IFBB Pro League was smart to put the memorandum out there that it is not something that we're doing. Um, I don't think that's beyond the realm of probability that a division like this might pop up because we live in these crazy times where we're going to have something for everything, whether it's the transgender or whether it's this men's wellness, um, they can have it, but it's up to you whether or not you want to be a part of it or whether or not you want to support it or watch it. Listen, they can do what they want to do, but I mean, I'm following what the IFBB Pro League is doing, and this has nothing to do with the IFBB Pro League. No, and listen, nor will it ever be, in my opinion. Uh, listen, maybe we're wrong. Maybe we'll be those old guys on the porch smoking our cigars, waxing about the old days, bro. But uh, I don't see this ever having a platform. Listen, there's some wacky and weird divisions out there right now uh, over on the Raphael side of the world and things like that that we got. You see the, the guys with the sport coats on with those shirts. They got the guys with the jeans on. I guess I, you're really – like, I've seen amputee competition. Uh, and listen, that's and that's different, right? The, the amputee slash wheelchair, that type of thing. Listen, I'm all for that because that's not something that, you know, a lot of these people either had a choice in or they just they came up short in the draw, obviously, you know, with, with you know, uh, under those circumstances. I don't even count that. that that's fine. Wheelchair has, has exploded. Big hats to uh, uh, Nick Scott out there. You know, he's done a great job with that over the year. And that's fine. No, no. The weird gray area, everybody's inclusive, every, something for everybody. No, no, no. Listen, there's also a business to be had here, and it's called supply and demand. We have divisions now that aren't as popular as other divisions and really only and they only hang out. Um, it's kind of like the WNBA is to, to the NBA, right? They don't have a big following. They don't have a lot of people behind it. There's not a lot of support, and that's just the way it's going to go. 95% of the people that are going to be at the Arnold, the Olympia, pick a big show, is there for men's bodybuilding. Yeah, well, I mean, you got to read the fine print. At the end of the day, you're going to see a lot of crazy stuff on the Internet. It's the wild, wild west out there, man. <laughs> it sure is. Anybody can put up anything. And listen, not to be outdone, we have the Miss Universe, and then we have the Miss Transgender Universe. And sometimes you don't really know which one you're looking at unless you read the fine print. <laughs> the, the world clearly has changed. When you say wild west, my friend, are we talking Cool Mo D, or are we, are we talking Will Smith edition? Well, li listen, at the end of the day, uh, the internet can do what it wants. These federations can do what they want. But just read the fine print. If the IFBB Pro League is going to put out a new division, it will come from the IFBB Pro League the same way we had time and everything. And, and that you got to love that about the IFBB Pro League is that they at least get, you know, they put the information out there. So you're hearing it from the source. You want to know what's happening in our industry, go to the IFBBProLeague.com website and read what's coming up. Yeah, if you're not seeing this out of Pittsburgh, folks, it doesn't exist, okay? Yeah. Just, just take it for what it's worth. Uh, it's not even worth getting into. But uh, uh, speaking of the fine print, my brother, I'm looking down at the Arnold Classic 2024 edition, Ohio. We're going to start with that. Um, it's minus a few names. So right off the bat, most people know by now, um, Andrew Jack is not making it. He's already pulled out. Uh, Rubio is not making it. Uh, Nextzilla, I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm kind of keen on that nickname, but um, he's not making it. It does look like Hani Chupan has made it to the States. Uh, he made an appearance actually with uh, Hani Rambod just this past week uh, at one of the workshops. So he's here. Um, that said, there's a few names I'm not familiar with on here. So, you know, we, we might get a, a dark horse somewhere in here. But um, as always, let's handicap this from the, from the top down. Basically, to me, it's a two-man race. You got Samson and you got Hottie. Now, I think if Hottie – everybody knows I love Samson. I'm a big Samson fan, love his physique, love what he brings and all that. I don't know if he can get that skin thin enough to challenge Hottie when it comes to conditioning. And that's where I think there's going to be a problem there. But heads up, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, uh, Samson's got his hands full with Hottie Chupan, former Olympia champ. 
we predicted it was going to be a two man race when we saw both of their names on the poster. Forget about who dropped out. Right. Come down to Hottie. This was going to come down to Samson. And again, I caught some slack when I mentioned uh, that someone talked, tried to talk about Nick Walker as being the X factor. I want to clarify some things. I remember for several years when Kai Grain was dangling the carrot about entering the Mr. Olympia. And we would get sidetracked talking about what Kai Green, the X Factor, would do to that Olympia lineup. Right. And then, then he never joined that lineup, but we talked about it for like three consecutive years. Nick Walker got injured, and Nick Walker's not in this lineup. So I wanted to discount Nick Walker from the Arnold Classic conversation because he has nothing to do with it. That does not guarantee that he makes it to the Olympia stage. I said that. It's very, there's a lot of gray area for a lot of athletes. Hottie's sure. here. There's still no guarantee he winds up on the Arnold stage. We almost saw that with Brandon Curry a year ago at the Mr. Oh. Olympia. On the eve of the Olympia, Brandon Curry was in the emergency. Um, and when he did wind up making it to the stage, of course, he was not the Brandon Curry we're familiar with. Hottie's here. He's got plenty of time. Samson is not. Okay, he's, he lives in Europe. So, yeah, right. Samson is on American soil. He's the X factor there. But let's say they both make it to Columbus. There's no hiccups. They're both standing on stage. Well, it, hold on. It, it takes me back. It takes me back to where I had my closest bite at the apple. People always talk about Sean talks about himself. I only have my personal reference, but I was standing there with Dorian Yates, and everyone says it's apples and oranges, right? You were a different fruit, my friend. That's for sure. This, this is a classic case of apples and oranges if I've ever saw it. Yeah. <laughs> or takes me back to 96 on the size differences, on the condition factor. If Samson shows up in condition, people will phone it in. That is a victory for Samson. If Hottie shows up in condition, is that a guarantee? Is that the only criteria for winning a contest? Because I can tell you, well, Ace was not in great condition in 94 or 96, but yet won. Because of his size and his mass. Well, see, I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're bringing this up, Sean. Because, you know, one thing we can do is handicap a show like nobody else can in this industry. We've got more, uh, uh, more time in the in the trenches, more time on the field, more time on everything, uh, more time in, in breakdowns and in, in uh, handicapping events. So I'm going to consider us on the top, of course, when it comes to handicapping an event. But I want to get more in depth into the judging because this is where it gets a little strange sometimes, hypothetically. Both guys show up, okay? Samson shows up in what we'll call his 100%. Now, his 100% is going to be taller, wider, better structure, better symmetry, better proportion, but not as quite as conditioned. He's not, listen, he's not out of condition, okay? But he's not going to be in the same condition as, let's say, Hadi Chupan. Hadi Chupan shows up in his 100%. Well, he is obviously shorter, blockier, not as aesthetic, way more conditioned, and probably, I don't know, it's about even for muscle on the frame. I mean, Samson's not small either, right? Right. Is part of the judging criteria, in your opinion, and, and again, you're a perfect person to ask for this because you were in the circumstance here with Dorian and circa, what was it, 94, 95? 94, 96, yeah. So if both of these guys show up and quote, their 100%, who wins in your opinion? Does the symmetry, shape, proportion, and all that stuff trump only conditioning and, and, and missing those things. Well, in my opinion, yes. I mean, I, I Samson, to me, has all the qualities. He had it last year. Um, I just, you know, Hottie's gotten a little bit blockier over the years. He's got, he still has that condition which separates him apart. But the completeness and the fullness of Samson has won me over. And yeah. I'm a fan. I'm a champion of the smaller bodybuilder. But Hottie is not in that symmetrical argument that Muhammad McAway was. In right. He's not in that argument like a Lila Brada. He's not in that ar argument as a Sean Ray, as an aesthetic, symmetrical bodybuilder. He's a hard-conditioned, grainy bodybuilder, much like uh, Andreas Munzer was, much like Muhammad Beneziza when we first saw him was. But it, it's not necessarily aesthetically on an equal playing field genetically with Samson. Samson is the modern-day Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. With down to, we saw Ronnie Coleman coming from 92 to 1998, where he, he peaked. We were not talking about Ronnie Coleman in 1998 prior to the show. Of becoming no, really? He nailed his condition, and he arrived on time, and he beat a bunch of Hall of Fame bodybuilders because he was in shape. 
Samson is the modern day Ronnie Coleman, in my opinion, that conditioning and shape, if they meet on stage at the same time, nothing against Hottie, but he beats everybody. Hottie just happens to be the closest one that could rival him, but they are not to, they're not similar in any capacity. No. <laughs> you know, Hottie and Derek, you can have these arguments. It's either going to be Samson, apples, or it's going to be Hottie, oranges. I was there. I know the feeling. And if Hottie beats Samson, it's not a knock on Samson, but he'll beat him on condition. If Samson beats Hottie, he beats Hottie because he's a better, more complete bodybuilder where conditioning meets symmetry and balance. He has more things in his arsenal than Hottie does. So I believe it's an uphill battle for Hottie. I, mean, <laughs> I think he's maxed out a little bit. It's just, I don't know if anybody could see that, but there were some fireworks that actually appeared behind you. I don't know what that, uh, well, that's some kind of weird app we got. I, I want to get myself some fireworks, but uh, and anyways, um, you know, this this always becomes, again, the, the apples oranges argument's a valid one for a lot of different reasons. Now, I will say this, and, and, I, and I say this to the fans out there watching, we always try to educate to some degree when we have these discussions. Just because one guy wins and he's an apple yeah. and the other guy loses and he's an orange, okay? It doesn't mean the judges don't know what they're looking for. It doesn't mean, well, the judges are all over the place, okay? You can have all different kinds of fruits in there, okay? Everybody's built a little bit different and everybody looks a little bit different. But there is no one physique. Like, just because Samson wins doesn't mean the guy in second, third, and fourth have to look like him, okay? And most often it doesn't. You competed in an era where you guys were all over the place. There was you, there was Dorian, there was Flex, there was Chris, there was... I mean, you know, Lee Labrada, obviously, closer in year, you know, shorter and smaller, but put together beautifully, a Bob Paris. There was people, the physiques are all over, but they don't they don't run in streaks like that. You know what I mean? Like, just because a, a guy wins, and let's say he's more aesthetic, but he's not as ripped, doesn't mean the guy in second is going to be the same. It might right. be a hottie Chupan or a Nick Walker or somebody like that. That's just the way it bounces. Let me ask you a question. Is this a one-day event for the open men bodybuilding? Uh, you know what? I do believe it's on the same day. Now they don't have all the events there, no. uh, like like the Olympia. So we're, we're missing, I think, half. But they I don't have some of the women's events. They don't have the two twelve. Isn't the men's prejudging Saturday and the men's final Saturday night? I believe so. I've always personally liked it like that. I like to see it like that at the Olympia and any other show because I've never uh, uh, subscribed to the notion that you have to hold the conditioning for a day. This isn't that kind of a sport. But that the argument back in the day is that's significantly why the athletes don't look as good because they're trying to hold on to these this timing thing. If this is a one day event, it does favor Samson. Well, uh, and, and also to, to further on that, Sean, I love the idea of well, one being both on the same day. And I don't care that could run true to anybody. You can have the. the uh, you know, classic, you know, same thing, Friday. Well, put him in the morning, put him on at night for the finals. Again, one day is sufficient when you got to go to these extremes to get this kind of conditioning and hold conditioning. That said, these physiques probably going to look 25 35% better if the show was on at 12 noon rather than late at night because you wake up, you're in, everybody's in the best shape when you wake up. Everybody knows that. You don't have to account for all day. And I think that's huge. Well, listen, I, you can't write Hottie off because he's been so consistent, right? Oh, he's yeah. On the Olympia, he lost the Olympia. He's top three in the Olympia a couple of times. Uh, we saw him coming when he was second place to James Flex Lewis over in Korea, I think it was, a long time ago. That's right. Yeah. The difference with a big man is it's kind of a more of a marathon race for them. And the shorter bodybuilder like myself and like Hottie, you have a shorter run, right? You, you – we, we max out sooner. And if you're asking me, have we seen the best of Hottie Chupin or the best of, of Samson, I would say we've seen the best of Hottie Chupin. Now, that being said, they're both coming from other countries to come here. Right. Peaking is 95% of this contest. They have to peak. Um, and so getting rid of the water once they arrive here, like a prize fighter or a wrestler trying to make weight, they've got to do the business. And it's, it's so easy to miss your peak. Because sure. you're holding water, and it's about holding water. It's not because your biceps are too small or your back is too narrow. They both have all of the goods. But when we look back over the years, I mean, I, I, I honestly believe I've seen the Hottie. There's no room for improvement on Hottie's physique. Right. Why I was saying 
we watched Ronnie Coleman in the public eye take five, six years to get there. And when he arrived, he had a few more years to do getting better. Samson is of the same ilk as Ronnie, whereas I don't think we saw the best of Samson, although he presented a glimpse of what's possible. Well, I think we've seen the best of Hottie. Didn't we see this play out at the Olympia literally where the difference to me between uh, Derek Lunsford, the eventual winner, and Hottie Chupan was aesthetics? Um, the only the only caveat in there was Samson, who to me literally controls his own destiny against these guys. If he shows up in 100% or close to it, I yes. don't think they can beat him because he has all those other boxes checkmarked. So well, didn't we see this play out, Sean, where the only difference between a Hottie Chupan – and and Derek Lunsford, who ended up beating him, was aesthetics. Isn't that wasn't that basically what happened? Yeah, and and again, the internet is going to go crazy uh, if Hottie loses, and the internet's going to go crazy if Samson. There's only one winner. <laughs> it's the beauty of having to wait it out and to see what happens. It's not what the judges are going to do that's going to determine the outcome of this show. It's going to come down to what these athletes have done in their off season. Okay, Hottie got a taste of bitter defeat. On an Olympia stage where micro points mm -hmm. the right. title slip away, that could have driven him deeper into his training, harder into his diet, and we might see what Ronnie Coleman did in 2001 at the Arnold Classic, streamline that physique, mm -hmm. and may come in a little bit more streamlined and show us a little bit different of a physique, and might rock the, the uh, Arnold Classic stage. He has more to lose losing the Arnold than he than Samson does. If Samson yeah, this this is huge, yeah. There's, but I don't, I don't see that. I, I see him going bigger. Uh, if I got an early prediction, I think, I think you might see Hottie's going to look like a freak. But I think he might be even bigger and more muscular than he was. And I don't know if that helps him in this case. I don't think. It does. I do think there is a distinct advantage, and I don't think a lot of people have been talking about this. But I think you might see the best Samson you've ever seen for this one reason and one reason only. He didn't have time to get off-season shape. Uh, if you remember last year, I actually had him on, on uh, was either my show or, or Olympia TV. And I told him, I said, you want to be Mr. Olympia, don't be 320 pounds in the offseason. And yeah. he, he he didn't disagree, yet he got the 320 pounds in the offseason. Now, why do I say that? Because he's coming off the Olympia now. So he never really got out of shape. He, he put on a few pounds, I'm sure. But um, I'm sure he's been pretty much kept to under 300 pounds, which is good for him. But I think because of that, Sean, he might now – have that opportunity to get that skin a little bit thinner, be a little bit more conditioned without the expense of size. And if he shows up even close to me, uh, he's the winner here over Hottie. Shit. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, I, I lost audio. Can you hear me? I lost audio. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Yep. If, you can hear, if you can hear me, what I, I, my I audio's got, gone. I don't know. We got reason. you, brother. Um, but what I wanted to tell you was uh, – Hottie didn't lose the Olympia title. He got beat. Right. And there's a I difference. Agree. I agree. Hottie didn't lose. Let me hear what I'm saying. Hottie didn't lose the Olympia. He got beat. And the judges agreed with that. There is a difference. Samson was not expected to win the Olympia. He improved. And he wasn't 100%. I said this before. The weight of the crown is heavy. Hottie Chupin, after he became Mr. Olympia, had to do the business of being Mr. Olympia. And he left the door open for somebody like Derek to, to, to knock him off his throne. Hadi has had a taste of victory and prize money and adulation. And losing sometimes is the best medicine. Samson has got to be on his toes because we could see a very improved Hadi Chupin in, as a result of him losing. Samson, it was a victory for him. And I hope he's not doing a victory lap because <laughs> this show right. has more significance on setting up the table for the Olympia in October in Las Vegas than him getting third place last year. Samson is in a must-win scenario, in my opinion, if he is to become the next Mr. Olympia because Derek will be watching. Derek right. will be licking his chops. He will be waiting for him. If he can slam the door on Hottie Chupin and put him in the, in the rearview mirror, we truly will have another rematch of apples and oranges yeah. come October. But Hottie also has got to remember he's in the twilight of his career he can ill afford to lose to samson as he prepares to try to recapture his throne this is the best thing for bodybuilding yeah and we we, we all have these opinions we can all make our predictions 
the result of this contest does not rest in the hands of the judges. It rests in the hands of the athletes. And you would it's a safe bet to bet on either. But if you're asking me, Bob, and I love Hottie Chupan. Sure. I feel like I've seen the best of Hottie Chupan. And Samson, like Ronnie Coleman, has a lot more gas in the tank and some changes he can do to really take us to the next level. Scary. Well, and we get to see it play out again because the virtually almost the same lineup minus minus a few guys, but those guys are in it are going to compete two weeks later in the U.K. So this time they're going to be in, in Samson's home turf. Uh, he'll be able to drive to the show relatively, and uh, they can play it out again. So, listen, we could see the rubber match happen at the Olympia. If Samson beats him twice, that, that's not going to sit well at all with Hottie, and that really puts things into perspective. But let me ask you this, Sean. Um, there's a whole bunch of superstars that did not opt to go in this show. There's no Brandon Curry. Um, we don't really know the status of, of, uh, of Big Romney right now. Um, there's no Nick Walker. There's no Hunter Labrada. Uh, there, there's there's a lot of guys that That's you know. The Olympia. There's literally two guys, which is Samson and Hottie, that were in the top 15 of the Olympia. Crezo opted to not go in. Why are all these guys bypassing the second biggest show on the circuit and with the most prestige? I got to log off and log back in because I lost your audio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's bad, bad you hear timing, me but I can't hear a thing. My Anything. audio is one hundred percent gone. So oh, man. keep talking. I'll log out and log back in. Here we go. So I, this is live TV. Live but, interviews. I hear. I, know, I can, bro, I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, he's got. Nothing. I need a twelve-year-old to figure this out for me, Bob. I'm sorry. I'm. <laughs> I don't know how to do this thing. I gotta uh, log out and log back in. All right. Well, listen, I'm going to just commentate my own stuff while Sean gets his shit together because that's the problem with the old school folks is without his daughter around to actually show him how to work this this funky thing called the computer, he's shit out of luck. So, good Lord, man. What you got I... some room to talk if I'm not here. Yeah, listen, uh, I'm not exactly uh, stupid when it comes to these things, but we'll see if Sean can, can actually figure out his way back in. But uh, the question remains, and folks, listen, you know I'm very active when it comes to the voice of bodybuilding. So, uh, after we get done, we're shooting this live, by the way. So for all you people watching live, appreciate it, man. Appreciate you guys coming in. And um, we're going to, uh, let's see. No, that's the wrong button there. Hopefully Sean's coming back in. Um, but listen, make all the comments you want, guys. I, You know I appreciate your feedback. I uh, love hearing from my fans. And I reply to each and every Brody. That's me. Okay, that's not the, the, the Korean uh, Jean-Pierre thing, right? And for Joe Biden, uh, which we just found out on the news the other day, okay? I actually respond to all you guys myself. So, yes. Any of those sarcastic comebacks, uh, you know, talking trash type of thing, that's me. And I do appreciate it. But the um, the bigger match in here, I don't even think it's for number one because I think it's clearly a two-man race. Um, so we're going to see uh, where that ends up. But the race for, for third, fourth, and fifth is actually really – um, that, that's that's going to be more the, the the race to watch because I think that's a little bit closer. Can you hear me now, Sean? I got, I got nothing. Zero, nothing. <laughs> so why, why would he have no audio? We don't know. Well, listen, like I say, this is live, folks. So let's see if Sugar can figure out Hall of Famer and everything except computers. But um, the race for three, four, and five. Okay, this is where it heats up. Because you got Rafael Brando, who's had a year off, beautiful physique. I love Rafael, love what he brings. Um, they also, uh, Horse MD, uh, what is it, Marcelo, I believe is his real name. Uh, but I'll call him Horse since that's what he likes. This is uh, more the competition, and, and to me, is for these two guys. Can either one of them break into the top two? I don't think so. I don't think they have the physique yet. Rafael, maybe in the, in the uh, future. This uh, horse MD is put together, man. I tell you what, this kid's got some physique. Um, he's he's maturing. You can see his musculature, uh, his thickness and density is coming up. He's bringing up those parts that he needs, especially from the back. That's where he's probably the weakest. Um, but you can't discount. I mean, listen to the rest of these guys. Uh, so you got Rafael, Horse MD, John De La Rosa, Mo Shabam, uh, and James Hollingshead. Justin Rodriguez, Antoine Valiant, who I think might be the most underrated guy out of the entire crew, and Akeem Williams, who I've said for years, if this guy can ever get his shit together, he's got as much or more muscle than anybody out there. 
but he has what I call that Lionel Bayecki problem, which is he looks great from the front. He is ripped. He is muscular. He's huge. He's put together. But when he turns around, it's like two different people. Um, and this isn't anything he doesn't know. I've actually had this conversation with him in the past. Um, he just doesn't know how to fix it, really. And I don't know if it is fixable. Might just be a genetics thing. Uh, I, I don't know if there's anything in particular. I've seen guys, you know, can't get the legs up to par with the upper body and vice versa. But front to back is very rare. And other than uh, Bayeki, I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody that had such a disparity than him. But Akeem is right there where that back just stays a little bit thick um, in terms of the skin, holding water, whatever you want to call it. So, but you can't count out like a, a Mo Shaban. Again, he, he kind of flies under the radar. Nothing outstanding, but, but no real weaknesses either. That's going to bode well for him. Yeah. James Hollings had his, has done his homework. He's been off for a year. And uh, if anybody saw the pictures he posted last week, uh, he's made some improvements. This is a guy that would not shock me if he's up in that first or second call. Uh, and when we call about that first call, let's just say they're going to call four or five guys. You know, you already got Samson and Heidi. That's two. Who's going to fill out the rest? Let's just say there's going to be five guys. Is it Raphael, Horse MD? Then there's one more spot. Is it John De La Rosa? Um, is it Antoine Valiant? Antoine Valiant is, like I say, this is a guy who very much flies underneath the radar. Ladies and gentlemen, he's back and badder than ever. Did you hear me? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Listen, this has been great so far. I've been debating myself, but I'm winning, bro. You're doing great, man. I knew you'd handle it. Sorry, but I don't Absolutely. So, so you'll want to participate in this, my, my uh, computer illiterate friend. The... Um, the, the race for the one and two is to, me, is to me already decided, barring something really unusual. These guys are going to go one, two. I think they're at just a different level, okay? It's the next fight, Sean. Like, who else is going to round out that first call out? You've got Rafael Brandau who's been off for a year and has made significant improvements. you got Horse MD, uh, Marcelo, new, relatively new guy on the, the block. But, man, he's got a hell of a physique. He's ripped. If he can just bring his back up or if he has, he's in the mix. And then you've got... Della Rosa, Mo Chabon, James Hollingshead, who's taken a year off, and he's made some improvements. Um, Justin Rodriguez, Antoine Valiant, who I think is a little bit underrated. And you got Akeem Williams, who I was just giving the analogy of – he's like Lionel Bayecki to me. When he comes yeah. out from the front, bro, he's a beast. I mean, he's a – but when he turns around, something's missing there. Yeah, you know, he reminds me of Orville Burke. The old that, that Another good analogy, yeah. Or he's kind of like Orville Burke. I was there when he won um, the Chicago Pro, I believe it was. And uh, he's got all the tools, but he has the very thick skin, right? Doesn't have the yeah. from the back though, not from the front. No, but from the back, it, he's got high lats from the back. Right. Uh, but with the company he's in, that is a good lineup for him to be in. Okay, so oh. we got one and two. We're dealing with three, four, and five. Correct. Right. Yeah. That's where. We're kind of looking at the next generation, right? We we don't realize it now, but we are looking at the next generation because when you get rid of Samson, you get rid of uh, Hottie, this is what we're left with. And well, yeah, you, you, got, you got Remico Bose, who I don't even know who that is. He's a new guy. Yeah. Uh, but so somebody's got, somebody's yeah. got to fill me in there whether he can hang, but he got an invite. So Yeah, that's why I'm saying we're, we may be getting a, a glimpse into the future. And when I say the future, I'm talking the next four or five years. Right sure. on I don't believe Hottie Chupin will be there. I don't believe Samson will be there in the next four or five years. These guys could potentially be the next guys carrying the torch, and that's where the comp competition lies. So I'm excited to see who can beat who here. This is a, a mod posit of, of, of different athletes with different looks. I want to see sure. what guys deal with them. But I well, has all the potential to be up in there. Yeah, I mean, he's got more muscle than pretty much anybody on that stage, and he's yeah. huge. He's, he's a good 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 he's not small, but um, – John De La Rosa, back in the mix, again, always had a, a, an aesthetic, uh, you know, even though he's on the shorter side, he's put together very well. But he's Conditioning has always been a, a slightly a problem, but if he nails that, again, could he be in the mix? I think you're going to see Raphael. I think you're going to see Horse MD. Uh, and I think you're going to see, I'll tell you what, I, I got to, he doesn't get a lot of love, but I got to give Antoine Valiant his props, man. This kid shows up in shape. He's bigger than you think he is. He's had some injuries that he's overcome. I know he's torn both biceps in the past, but he got them reattached, and yeah. you know he, he's back in business. But uh, the, the kid looks good, man. And Hollingshead might sneak in there. Yeah, and, and again, uh, 
Antoine, a lot of times, he looks better by himself. We've seen yep. pitchers run up to the show, and then he gets up there with these guys that are not injured, that are not overcoming. Well, you, you saw him at the California Pro, correct, a couple yeah. of times? Yeah. When it gets to the stage, for, for whatever reason, I think sometimes he diminishes a little bit. When he's on his way down, I think sometimes he comes down far. And that, that can be pressure. It can be the diet. And I've seen it happen before. Rory Lidlmeyer used to be like that, right? You see him yeah, the, yeah. 300 pounds, and we think this guy's going to kill everybody. What do, you think of, uh, what do you think of Rafael Brando? He's got all the potential. I remember seeing the guy. He, he's got a great little uh, structure on him. When you're talking about this lineup, he could sure. be the third place. Easy. He could and, be like uh, Horse MD. This Marcelo uh, De Angelis. Uh, yeah. Goes by horse. I like that. But <laughs> horse, ox, berry. These guys are animals. I yeah, mean, well, what's good is this is a good platform to be on. You know, we talk about the California. We talk about New York. Sure. Um, this lineup is missing guys that are missing opportunities. Again, this is a place where, you know, you expect to see Hunter Labrada, right? You would expect to see Sergio Oliva Jr. Um, this is a big stage, right? I, I don't know why these athletes uh, are not here. Uh, whatever life has has in well, Sergio, Sergio is a great name to bring up, right? Because here's a guy now, from what we understand, I haven't talked to Sergio in some months. Last I caught up with him, he was moving to Spain. Yeah, uh, he's been trained with Dorian Yates, like personally, which we've seen some great video. But why isn't he here? Like, wouldn't this be a? Gr he's been here before. He's gotten the best poser award. He's been right there in the mix. I mean, he's got he's a huge guy. He's got all the potential. But why isn't he here? Where's Carlos? Yeah. Where's Labrada? Like, where's all these guys that are kind of on the outside knocking on the door? But why aren't they in the Arnold, Sean? Why? Yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure. It would have been nice to see Sean Clarita come back to this lineup, right? Because Sean served notice. Sean could have came in here and, and battled for the top three spot, right? I, I think I Sean's think up to his uh, up to his armpits and Enfamil and, and, and diapers right now. But uh, and he just opened up his own gym, so I, I think he's got his hands full. We'll give him a break, you know, but but there's guys that we haven't seen that to me this was a golden opportunity. But keep in mind, Brian Powers and the crew at the Arnold got to give him uh, props where it's due. They bumped this up a hundred grand last year. It's a it's not a small check. Yeah, it's 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 disappointing from the standpoint that there are some names that should be here uh, that are not, and I think it's going to be a missed opportunity for them. You know, you have you have to wonder sometimes if these athletes see the names that are on the list and go, you know what, I'm going to skip that one because we couldn't do that. Like when you saw Dorian and Ronnie and Flex and Kevin were in the lineup, like you can't, you're an athlete. It doesn't matter who's going to be there. Right. Let the chips fall where you will. Uh, nowadays, I think people look at the lineup first and then consider their options next. And I don't, I don't think that's a good way to approach bodybuilding. Well, everybody's at different levels, right? Like, like just because you look at, I don't care if you looked at the lineup well in advance and you went, look at, I ain't beating this guy, I ain't beating this guy. Listen, getting into the top five can be a goal. How yeah. about? Competing at the Arnold can be a goal, right? I mean, listen, maybe you're just starting your your uh, career, right? You got to put on some like this uh, horse MD guy, right? Listen, young guy, good physique, comes up to the bone, got to put a little bit of size on and fill in some area. But why not get your feet wet in a show like this? Maybe, maybe listen, maybe you catch some guys sleeping, right? And you got another show in two weeks uh, across the pond with another paycheck. That again, most of the guys now that's only got from what I can see about seven guys in it right now. Yeah, I'm I'm curious. Um... Is Hottie on that lineup? Hottie's on the list. Uh, I'll tell you exactly who's on the list from what I saw. Hottie, Samson, Della Rosa, Mo Shaban, Hollingshead, that's his backyard, um, Antoine Valiant, and Akeem Williams. So it's almost the uh, same lineup. The only two people missing from that is Andrew Jack and, and Rubio. Neither one uh, looks like they're opting to get in. Uh, I, even, if, even if you had – it didn't sound like Jack had any visa problems or issues. It just – Sound like he bailed out and just says, eh, you know, I'm gonna take my time or I'm not I'm not ready to compete again. Rubio, from what I understand, or next Zilla, as uh, people like to call him, um, chased the Lonnie Keeper out there for the Zilla. Um, I don't know what happened. I, I thought he had some visa issues getting to the States, but getting to the UK, I would think would be much easier. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes you wonder, you know, does he think he's even ready for that level of competition? Some guys when they first turn pro. Mind you, he, he turned pro over in Prague, was it? Something Prague. like that, yeah. Or, yeah, Spain or one of those. Let me, ask, let me ask you this, though. What Like, this guy's an animal, bro. I mean, listen, he is huge. I mean, everybody's seen pictures and videos of him by now, right? This guy's a true freak. And when I say that, of course, in bodybuilding, that's the highest accolade you can get. But is he trouble for some people? 
You know, for the for the higher end guys, no, because he just doesn't have the symmetry and the balance and the proportion and even the presentation. By himself, he picks the right shows. He wins every day, all day. On you know, you're talking about he could win like the Tampa show. He could win the California Pro. He could probably win over in Romania. He picks. But he, right if he's, let me ask you this though, because this kind of puts things in perspective, right? I don't think there's any question anybody would consider him anything but a freak, right? Like in bodybuilding terms, okay. Listen, that's again, that's an accolade we give. It's not a bad thing, right? He's not an aesthetic guy. He's not a symmetric guy. He's he's a big muscular freak, right? Where does that put a Nick Walker in the mix? If he's a freak, what is this guy? Well, I, I think Nick's a more complete bodybuilder than Nexzilla. Nexzilla is along the lines of a Quadzilla, Paul DeMeo, the late Paul DeMeo, a Mike Matarazzo. Um, we've seen uh, freaks come and, and freaks go, and they have a, a good run. If they pick the right shows, you put them in an Olympia lineup where you have the genetic factor. Sure. They, they're like shrinking violets. You remember Greg Kovacs? Sure. The biggest thing to come down the pipe. But when you put them on the Arnold Classic stage. Yeah. Just yeah. another body. I think uh, nextzilla has got to pick his shows properly. I think it might have been wise for him not to jump into the deep end with these sharks. And if he, he picks the right show, he can be a champion. And I think if he, if he, I mean, he's in, uh, where is he, in Dubai or somewhere or thereof? Columbia, I think. Or um, the Dubai Pro would be a great show for him because oh, that's, that's one of those shows. Listen, they, they uh, you're in Europe. The European fans love the freaks. They always loved uh, uh, Marcus, of course, and then the Paco Batista. And you remember some of these guys. Yeah. Uh, the, right yeah, from, the freaks, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, listen, Bonnie. The New York Pro. Mark, you know, Marcus Rule won the New York Pro. And he just barely made the cut in the top 10 of the Olympia. So it yeah. shows you, uh, genetically speaking, how well, those guys are. It had, now, with due respect to, to Marcus, because I was standing next to him when he won that show. Beauty and the Beast is, is how they like to refer to that, by the way. Um, he didn't show up in the – that's the only show. Like, talk about bad luck on my side, right? I, I hit it pretty good. I thought I was, you know, probably in the 95 percentile, probably my all-time best, right? This guy shows up, and he's got to be at his all-time best. Which he never matched again. No, not one show. If he shows up like that at the Olympia, I think he was probably in the in the fight for the top five or six. But yeah, well, I mean, I, I think Gunther Schlerkamp made a career off of beating yeah. Ron. Showed up at his all time best and took the champion, the defending champion. Yeah, at, I think it was the two hundred two GNC show, and uh, Gunther became very famous as a result of, of catching Ronnie Coleman off guard. Next, Zilla's got a career in the sport. I don't know that it resides on the Olympia stage, uh, or even the Arnold Classic stage. So there's victories out there to be had. I just don't think he's he's ready for that that level. Well, I'll tell you what I'm ready for. I'm ready for the Arnold Classic. I'm ready to get this this uh, season kicked off. Um, I got to give I got to give huge uh, 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 shout out and accolades to Arnold. So I'm watching the Super Bowl as you were, I'm sure. Of course, we're all watching the commercials. I got to be honest. For the most part, I thought the commercials were pretty lame. All right, just they're trying way too hard or missing a point or, you know, whatever. The Arnold one comes on, which, and, and now you've seen the aftermath. This has been voted the number one uh, commercial of the Super Bowl was the Arnold commercial. Um, I'm sure you saw it, you know, Sean, where they're obviously making, he's kind of making fun of himself and his accent and all that. But what a great commercial for Arnold. Still kicking it around. What's he, 75 now? Six, yeah. So right in that, right in that range and, and still making us laugh. And remember, this is the guy with the funny last name. Right. Made fun of his typecast acting, and you know, at the ripe old age of seventy six, comes out and he's still got us laughing. I mean, well, bro, he is, listen, he he hasn't slowed down at all. Not only does he, does he do this new commercial, right? You know, Agent State Farm, which I, I got to bring up, of course, when I'm there with him at the uh, Sunday seminar. We'll have some fun with that. Um, but it gets voted the best, of course. Arnold's still competitive even at seventy six, right? He's got to be the best, and he and he actually got that that award is from the people as as it would be. Just had a, that documentary he's got out is fantastic. It's like a four or five part series. I've seen that on Netflix. Fantastic. He's got a new book out that he put out called uh, Be Useful or uh, something there. I haven't read it yet. Maybe he'll give me one when we get to the show. But um, he hasn't showed any show, any any signs of slowing down. Any, but he will be in Columbus. I don't know. I've heard various uh, back and forth whether he'll actually be in the UK. I don't know. Yeah. Well, either way, man. I mean, Arnold is the reason for the season. We, we start every year off in March. Sometimes it's cold. Uh, sometimes it's not. I don't know what the weather prediction is. But, right. Uh, the Arnold has always found a way to bring us all together. And, so, you know, we're we're living in some divided times on a lot of things, whether it's the economy or the politics or 
race, religion, immigration, all of those things. But when it comes down to the Arnold Classic, we see all kinds there. We're brought together for one reason, and that's Arnold. And again, it's great to be able to continue going back to Columbus, Ohio, and, and growing old together. Arnold doesn't put this show on and just phone it in. He's making the round at every one of those events. And again, he's making every bodybuilder feel welcome. Um, and, you know, he stepped into the, the shoes uh, of an icon like Joe Weider, who was also very similar. And, and he's like the godfather of bodybuilding. We're going to Columbus for one reason, to see a good show, but to also see Arnold. Well, like I say, uh, uh, who's who will be at the Arnold. Uh, Jim Manuel will be there. Again, I'll be seeing him this weekend uh, as I trek to Pittsburgh, um, uh, where it all happens, and then celebrate. We're celebrating Jim's 80th. Uh, so he'll be there, of course, representing. And uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of people you don't even recognize, Sean, because the likes of Seabum. And his brother-in-law, Ian, and, and even our own Ron Harris have all gone to Turkey and gotten a new shock of hair put on, bro. This is this could be huge for you. This Is this yeah, any... Uh... We're going to have some prizes. We, we've seen the BBL movement. We've seen the Vince <laughs> Wellness movement. I mean, what's next, right? I mean, we've seen the teeth whitening movement. Bro, what do you, what do you think, man? Are you going to go back to that... that, uh, that I'll bring back the show. <laughs> this, is, this could be a new look for you. That ship sailed, brother. <laughs> but I welcome you on behalf of the Mutant Crew. We're getting bigger, we're getting better, we're getting broader, and uh, we are global. And it's uh, it's good to have you on behalf of the Mutant family. Uh, well, I appreciate it. I do appreciate that, my brother. Uh, you and I will be at the Mutant booth, actually, at various times. Uh, you more than me, as I've got some MC duties over the weekend. But um, I do have some spare time. Uh, Celsius will also be there, one of my other top sponsors. And uh, even though we're not there, uh, Panada uh, will be there in spirit, of course. I'll be representing, but... Panada, we will be at the uh, Arnold UK. We've got a huge booth. We have the title sponsor, actually, of the Arnold UK. So we'll be there. And um, we'll see you in yeah. LA at the Ursa trade show. Uh, Ursa, we got coming up, bro. So yeah, we're going to be all over. But bring it old school back. Uh, Sugar Sean, appreciate you taking the time out for the season opener of the VOB, my friend. And uh, I will see you next week. All right. Good stuff. All right, everybody. That's going to wrap it up for another great edition of The Voice of Bodybuilding. I'm Bob Chick. See everybody next week.